قل هو الله أحد And in this brief khutbah, I would like to share with you a reminder about a surah that I've been thinking about and studying for the last month. This is Surah Al-Insan. And in the beginning of it, there is a powerful question that Allah asks every human being. And in order to get the most out of the speech of Allah, especially when He uses the word Al-Insan, the human being, instead of thinking about humanity at large and the billions of people that live in this world and the people that have lived in the past, Every one of us should be thinking about ourselves. I should be thinking about myself to get the most out of the ayah that mentions an insan. So it's a very personal message catered to every single human being and more particularly because we're fortunate enough to be believers. So as you hear the word human being, I should be thinking about myself and you should be thinking about yourself. هَلْ أَتَى عَلَى الْإِنسَانِ حِينٌ مِّنَ الدَّهْرِ لَمْ يَكُنْ شَيْئًا مَذْكُورًا was there ever a time that from the endless oceans of time, Ad-Dahr, the endless oceans of time, was there ever even a simple, small episode of time when human beings used to be something that wasn't even worthy of being talked about, wasn't even worthy of being mentioned, and also wasn't even worthy of being remembered? Allah is asking you and me a very simple question. Was there ever a time when no one remembered you? Was there ever a time when no one talked about you? When even if, if you did exist, people were shy to talk about you. They were uncomfortable to talk about you. And immediately in the next ayah, he says, he created the human being from a fluid, from a drop, nutfa, that is mixed, meaning mixed between the male and the female. And Allah is now talking about something, the sperm, that is, and the, and the egg that meet each other, the pregnancy of a woman, that is an uncomfortable, embarrassing conversation. So it is not something you talk about casually. It's not something you're comfortable talking about. And in the previous ayah, Allah already said, you used to be something not even worthy of mention and not even something remembered. But there are layers of meaning inside these ayat that I want to unpack some of those layers for myself and all of you. The universe, the physical universe as we know it, physicists tell us it's existed for about 13.9 billion years. This planet has been around for maybe 4 to 5 billion years, the formation of this planet. In all of that endless ocean of time, I was not being talked about. I was not mentioned, I didn't exist. And even when this world came into existence, after this endless period of time, when humanity started on this planet, so much human history has passed and no one in that history knew who I was. I was never remembered, I was never mentioned. You can read about history and those people are relevant. The only one not relevant is you. You don't exist for them. They exist for you, you don't exist for them. Using this as a reminder, Allah says, the vast majority of time has passed where you and I were completely irrelevant. We were, com were not part of the story. And this is Allah's way of reminding us that the few moments that we do exist after I come out of my mother. In fact, even when my mother was pregnant in the beginning, she had no idea that I was inside. She's walking around with the baby. She doesn't even know. And then when she notices her body changing, then they both start making dua. If you can just give us a good child. They don't even know who this child is. Even when they remembered my mother was thinking about me when I was still in her belly, she didn't know who I was. She couldn't actually think of me properly. She didn't know if I was a boy or a girl. She didn't know what kind of child I will be, what kind of features I will have. She knew nothing. But then after I even came into this world, even after I came into this world, you'll notice something. Human beings, by their design, one of the words for human, the, the origin of the word insan is actually uns. And uns means love and compassion. Human beings don't just give love, they also want to receive love and they want to receive compassion. So even from childhood, the moment you become a little bit self-aware, you are looking for attention. If your mother is not looking at you, mama, 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 those of you that have kids know this already. Kids need attention. 
They're always looking for attention. When they get a little bit older, they draw something they want to show you because they want your attention. They want to be acknowledged. Look at how I'm dressed. Look at what I did. Look at what I can do. The kid can't even jump yet. This is his jump, but he says, look at me. Look at this. Now look again. Because he wants that attention for himself. He wants to be madhkur. The word is madhkur. Someone who is mentioned. Someone who is remembered. This is put inside the nature of a human being. And as you grow older, you want to, when you're a teenager, you want to dress nicely. You want to look good because you want to be seen and noticed. Also, madhkur. You want to be mentioned. You want to be talked about. And as you grow further, now when you're in university, I know there's a convocation happening. There's, it's a big deal to graduate. And what, what happens? People, when they, people get their certificate, you're going to get a lot of uploads on Instagram and on Facebook of pictures of certificates that nobody cares about except you. But you have a need to be madhkur. You have a need to be mentioned. MashaAllah, congratulations, congratulations. We live our life looking for acknowledgement. Even when people get married, the wife is looking for the acknowledgement of the husband. The hus husband is looking for the acknowledgement of the wife. We're looking to make our parents proud. You know, when you graduate, everybody's congratulating you, but you want to be madhkur to your dad. Dad, I graduated. Dad, it's done. Dad, did you see the picture? And you need to get that congratulations from your father or your mother because there's always someone who we want to be remembered by. You know, there are studies now that people are now more isolated and feel more lonely and alone than ever before in history. It's interesting. I was at an Islamic school in, a, in a, another Muslim country and I was talking to a number of boys and girls. There were about 300, 400 boys, 300, 400 girls, 13, 14 years of age. And I gave a lecture and the principal and the teachers, everybody was there. So they had a question answer session and nobody asked a question. 800 children in the room, nobody asked a question. And I said, they're not asking a question because the police is watching them. The teachers are there, the principal is there, the cameraman is there. They don't want to get in trouble. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the crowd and talk to these kids with no camera, no microphone. I just want to talk to them. I went inside the girls section, just talking to these young girls, two hours. They couldn't stop asking their questions. And on the other side, the boys, another two hours, they couldn't stop asking their questions. And the most common question was, what do you do if you feel alone all the time? What do you feel, what do you do if you feel invisible, if nobody sees you? Human beings have such a deep desire to be madhkur that a teenager sees all their other friends online and they're like, I'm, I don't have an online account. I don't, I don't have that many followers. I'm not being seen. I'm not madhkur. I better take another picture. No, I better change the filters. I better do something else. I better change the background or the light wasn't good enough and then post it. Ah, somebody will put a heart emoji. Somebody will put a thumbs up. I'm madhkur. Ha, ah, I can exist now. And if you don't post it, if you don't post your next slice of pizza, if you don't post your, you know, where you're standing, what park you're in, or some wisdom from Abu Jahal or something, if you don't post that, then all of a sudden nobody knows you exist. So you become غير مذكور. For the vast majority of the existence of the universe, and for the vast majority of the existence of humanity, you were غير مذكور. And there's a time that's coming pretty soon, or you and I are going to be in the grave and some people will remember us and they will cry over us and then time will pass and we will be غير مذكور again. We, we remember famous people, right? We remember scholars, for example, in Islamic history. We remember people like Imam al-Shafi'i rahimahullah or Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah. But they had a big family. Nobody remembers their family. A lot of those people are invisible to us now. We don't remember the rulers. We don't remember the millionaires and the billionaires. We don't remember the good-looking people. We don't remember the popular people, the famous people. We don't remember the art. We don't remember them. They're gone. They became irrelevant again. And Allah is teaching you and me, you're running after this thing to be relevant, to be remembered, to be talked about, to, be, to have users engage with you. This is what you want all the time. But you were created for the most part غير مذكور and you will be غير مذكور again. You're going to go back to that irrelevance again. That's a pretty depressing outlook. 
then nobody's going to remember me. Nobody's going to know. And by the way, people who don't even believe in Allah, they also feel the need to be remembered. So you'll have billionaires that are that, that don't believe in anything. They don't believe in any religion. And they're about to die. They're old. They're about to die. And they take their wealth and they donate it to a hospital. Or they donate it to a charity. But they put a condition. Put my name on the building and make a statue of me and put it at the entrance. Because I, even if I don't exist, my memory needs to exist. I still need to be madhkur even if I don't exist. This is something put deep inside them. But this desire that Allah put inside of a child to get the attention of the child, or the desire that Allah put inside human beings that is driving the multi-billion dollar social media industry. If human beings did not want attention, you couldn't have social media. It wouldn't exist. It's not some evil machine. It only feeds on our own desire. We have this desire, which is why it's, it works the way that it works. It feeds off of our own energy. Well, the thing is, why did Allah put this inside me? What's the point of it? Why am I looking for acknowledgement all the time? Why do I feel like something is missing if I didn't get acknowledged? You know, if I feel something, if I feel, if I feel invisible, there's, a, there's an emptiness inside me. And Allah Himself describes this in the latter ayah. He says, إِنَّا هَدَيْنَاهُ السَّبِيلَ إِمَّا شَاكِرًا وَإِمَّا كَفُورًا We guided him to a journey, a path. Every human being inside them, Allah put in, programmed inside them that they are in this life on a journey. Now there's one part of that journey, whether you realize it or not, you're on the journey anyway. <inaudible> Every day is passing by, life is a journey. Every human being is making a journey towards death. Every one of us, every single day is one day closer to death. That journey is happening on autopilot. That's not controlled by me, that's already decided by Allah. But there's another journey. Not the journey of my lifespan, but the journey inside of my heart and inside of my mind. There's a journey Allah wants me to make back to Allah. We came from Allah, we belong to Allah, and we want, Allah wants us to make a journey back towards Him in our head, in our mind. But the mind is too preoccupied wanting to be acknowledged by someone else wanting to be acknowledged by other human beings. And Allah wants that heart and that mind to first be busy looking for the acknowledgement of Allah. Is my Rabb pleased with me? Is my Rabb looking at this good deed and is he happy with this deed? Is my Rabb happy with this service? Am I living my life in a way that eventually when this life journey ends, I'm going to get to meet him? 